Please note that filming text on the whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go, so we'll help you learn the material in a more interactive way, and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that the discrepancy arises between the professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They're merely learning tools to help understand the material. All right, guys and girls, it's time to get cracking. Alright you guys, today we're going to be talking about nucleophilic substitution reactions. And this is the second major type of reaction you guys are learning this quarter. The first major type of reaction you guys learned was with alkenes. Do you guys remember what type of reactions alkenes undergo? Well remember, alkenes undergo addition reactions. This is where you take an alkene, a double bond, and you add something to it. Okay, so let's just take for example HBr. You add these two things together, and you're going to get an, an addition reaction where this hydrogen is going to add to this carbon of the alkene, and this bromine will add to this carbon of the alkene. So this was an addition reaction. We were only adding atoms to this compound. No atoms were getting taken away, right? This is in comparison to the type of reaction we're going to talk about today, which is a nucleophilic substitution reaction, where we're going to substitute one thing for something else. Okay, so go ahead and take a look at this compound for a second. And do you guys know what type of compound this is called, where you've got a carbon group with a halogen connected to it? Well, remember, a carbon group, this is also known as an alkyl group, right? And hey, a bromine's just a halogen. So, a name for this guy is alkyl halide. Alkyl because it's got a 1, 2, 3 carbon alkyl group, and halide because, hey, bromine's a halogen, right? But you might run into one other name for this guy, which is haloalkane. But this means the exact same thing, you guys. Halo, because you've got a halogen. Alkane, because you've got an alkyl group. Okay, so whichever one you want to use, they're both correct. Take home message is, whenever you see an alkyl halide or a halo alkane, you should be thinking, hey, this is probably going to do a nucleophilic substitution reaction. Okay, so just like when you saw an alkene before, you should be thinking, hey, alkene, that's probably going to undergo an addition reaction. So alkyl halide, hey, that's probably going to undergo a nucleophilic substitution reaction, all right? All right, so we're going to be going over these nucleophilic substitution reactions in detail in just a little bit. But for now, I just want you guys to get a general idea for what's going on in these substitution reactions. Okay, so I told you that in a nucleophilic substitution reaction, something is going to get substituted for something else. But what are these two things? Well, the hint is in the name, you guys. In a nucleophilic substitution reaction, a nucleophile is going to substitute for something called a leaving group. Okay, so let me go ahead and add in a nucleophile to this thing, such as OH minus. Okay, so we're going to have a nucleophile that's going to substitute for something on our alkyl halide. And what is it going to be? Well, it's going to be our halogen. This bromine is going to be our leaving group. Okay, so what's going to end up happening here is that when you throw these two things in together with one another, then you're going to get a nucleophilic substitution reaction where this OH minus nucleophile is going to substitute in place of that bromine. So you'll now see that this OH minus nucleophile took the place of this bromine on that alkyl group. And this poor bromine got kicked off as a lonely leaving group. Okay, so take home message here, you guys. We're going to go through in detail how this happens in just a little bit. For now, just realize that in a nucleophilic substitution reaction, a nucleophile is going to be substituting for a leaving group. As you can see, the leaving group left, the nucleophile substituted now on that alkyl group, okay?
All right, so let's start off with general features about these nucleophilic substitution reactions. And there's two types of nucleophilic substitution reactions. You guys might have heard of the SN1 and the SN2. Those are the two types. They're very similar. They're both substitution reactions, but they work a little differently. And we'll find out all about that later. For right now, all I want to talk about is the general features that are common to any nucleophilic substitution reaction, all right? Okay, so general features. We'll start off by talking about the players, who's involved in these types of reactions, all right? All right, so we have three players involved in any nucleophilic substitution reaction you're going to see. So we've got a nucleophile, an electrophile, and a leaving group. Let's find out more about these guys. Okay, so starting with the first one, nucleophile. This is abbreviated N-U with two dots next to it. Do you guys know what these two dots stand for? That's not a colon, you guys. These two dots stand for electrons because a nucleophile, this is something that's electron rich. This nucleophile has a bunch of electrons that he'd love to share with somebody. That's why we draw those two electrons next to it to say, hey, this guy's electron rich. He's got electrons to share. Okay, so we say that a nucleophile this is an electron-rich atom. He's got a bunch of electrons he'd love to share with somebody. And who is that somebody? An electrophile. A nucleophile would love to share his electrons with an electrophile. Because an electrophile, we abbreviate this as E with a positive sign next to it. A positive is there because, hey, an electrophile is electron deficient. He's lacking electrons so much that he's positively charged. Okay, so an electrophile, this isn't an electron rich atom. An electrophile, this is an electron poor atom. Because remember, you guys, Electrophile, this stands for electron loving, or it means electron loving. This electrophile would love it if somebody would come and share electrons with them. And who is that somebody? A nucleophile, someone with a lot of electrons, right? Okay, so that's nucleophile and electrophile. This brings us to our last guy, LG. This stands for leaving group. Let me go ahead and put up two details about a leaving group, and then we can talk about it. All right, so this is saying that a leaving group is an electronegative atom or group of atoms that's bonded to the electrophile, the same electrophile that we talked about up here. Okay, so what this is saying is that a leaving group, this is an electronegative atom that's pulling electrons away from whatever it's connected to, and it's bonded to the electrophile. That's what makes this electrophile electron poor, because it's getting its electrons taken away by the leaving group. Okay, so if you guys want to see what I'm talking about, if you remember the alkyl halide that I drew up from before, we mentioned before that this bromine was the leaving group, and I'm telling you that a leaving group, this is an electronegative atom that's bonded to an electrophile. It's pulling electrons away from whatever it's connected to, and it's connected to this carbon of this alkyl halide, right? So leaving group, this is an electronegative atom, like this halogen, that's bonded to an electrophile. It's pulling electrons away from this carbon, making this carbon partially positive, making him electron deficient, making him electron poor atom, making him an electrophile, right you guys? So that's why this carbon right here is an electrophile and this guy right here is a leaving group. He's the electronegative atom that's bonded to this guy that's pulling electrons away from him, making him an electrophile, okay?